In this video, we're going to look at Circle Theorem. We're going to work through each of the individual theorem and then look to apply them to a range of different questions. So let's go ahead and start off with an app. I've made this app here and we're going to start with what we call the arrow theorem. So this is the arrow. Angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So this is one of the circle theorem. So if I move now these points here, we can see now that the angle at the centre is always twice the size of that at the circumference. Wherever I move this, this will hold true. So we could call this the arrow theorem. So if I do that and move it round, and if we take it to approximately 100 degrees, we can see now that the one at the top is approximately 50 degrees, and that will always hold true. Be careful with some of these. Often you might get a question like this and we would be asked to find this missing angle. So just be careful and just expect this to be loads of different ways round. So another one that they often like to throw out is something like that. And we can see now that angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So that is the arrow. So going ahead, moving round, the arrow theorem. If we now move on to the next one, this is called the Bow Theorem. We have the angles in now, the same segment are the same. So if I look at these two red angles, they will be the same as now each other. The two green angles will be the same as each other. So this is the bow. It actually comes from the arrow, as all we'd have is some center point here, and it's exactly the same as moving this around. So the bow comes from the arrow, but essentially all we've got now are the red angles are the same and the green angles are the same. So this is the bow theorem. So arrow, let's move across, we've got the arrow and we have the bow. The next one is the quadrilateral. This is called a cyclic or cyclic quadrilateral. The opposite angles are going to equal 180 degrees. So if we have four points on the circumference of a circle, we will have now 180 degrees with the opposite angles. So if I move this round, let's see if we can make now something that looks a bit like a rectangle. Let's put that there like so. And then we'll just move that. Let's go ahead. And that looks something, give or take, like a rectangle. Let's see if we can make it a bit better. There we go. So. These now are going to equal 180 if we add them, and these two will equal 180. They must now be on the circumference of a circle. So opposite angles of the quadrilateral will equal 180. So let's go back. We've got the arrow. Angles at the centre are double that of the circumference. We have now the bow. These angles are going to be equal, and the top angles are going to be equal, and we have the quadrilateral. Opposite angles equal 180. If we now move on to the next one, angles in a semicircle equal 90 degrees. So we can see wherever I move that, as long as I have a point on the circumference of the circle and a point here where we have a diameter through the centre, it will always create a 90 degree right angle at the circumference. And we can see round here that's doing exactly the same as the angle around the outside is 270. So wherever that goes, that will be the case. For this one, we need a diameter and it must pass through the center. So angles in a semicircle have a 90 degree right angle. Check that it goes through the center. So going back, bow, arrow, quadrilateral, and then now the semicircle. Okay, let's move down and look at some more. So these are now four. If we go to this one just here, this is called the radius tangent theorem. If we have a radius, so that's the line from the center to the circumference, and we have a tangent, which is the line that touches, it will always create a 90 degree right angle. Imagine now a plank on a barrel. If you like, imagine a wheel on a road. What we'll have is this line just here, and it will always be 90 degrees. So that's the radius tangent theorem. 
If we look at the next one, this is called the alternate segment theorem. This is the more challenging one. If we have a tangent, as we can see just here, we have an angle here and an angle here, they will be equal. This angle right here will be equal with this one. So wherever I move this now, this angle will be the same as this one. If you like a nice way to think about it, if you want to think of a crocodile's mouth, that is opening up to the right. Therefore, this is going to be the same as it's opening up to the right. This one is opening up to the left. It will be the same as this one, which is opening up to the left. OK, so let's go over those. Radius, tangent, 90 degree right angle. We've got the alternate segment, which I think is the more challenging one on of the ones that we've looked at so far. And now we're going to just move on. I'm going to come back to this one, to the dual tangent theorem. The dual tangent theorem looks something like so. This comes off now the tangent radius theorem. So if we had now a radius just here and a radius just here, these now share two, we're going to have two congruent triangles, which are identical triangles. They share this line. That means now from the point here to the circumference will be the same as the point here to the circumference. So that gives us now the dual tangent theorem. So wherever I put that, the distance from this point to here is the same as the distance from this point to here. So let's go over those. The first one, radius tangent theorem. So that will always be 90 degrees. Alternate segment, the alternate segment, we have the angle here and the angle here to be equal. Just moving that round, we can see that's the case. We have now the dual tangent theorem, and that simply says now that the point here to here is the same as the point from here to here, and they share this line. I'll quickly look at the next one. Um, this is one that isn't as um, frequently seen. If we have now a chord, this is a chord. That's just a diameter that doesn't pass through the centre. And another chord, and we bisect those chords with a perpendicular bisector. That's a line that cuts through the centre of this chord at right angles. If we have two of those, they will find the centre of the circle. So as you can see, this line right here, if we bisect it, it will find the middle. The other ones are the more important ones that we're going to focus on. So arrow theorem, angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. Bow theorem, the two angles here are the same, the two angles here are the same. The quadrilateral, opposite angles equal 180 degrees. Angles in a semicircle, we have a 90 degree right angle. If we look now down, we have the radius tangent, 90 degrees. The alternate segment, which is going to give us now two angles of the same. And then the dual tangent, which means these two lines are the same, as we can see, given by the notation. What I suggest you do is if you go to my site, you will find a help sheet and have this at hand. Don't confuse yourself to begin with, just use the theorem. It's also important to stress that we can't forget basic angle facts. Angles in a triangle sum to 180, angles on a straight line sum to 180, and all of those little things that students often forget. So let's have a go then. Let's have a go at working some of these out. So here's a circle, and we need to find the angles A and B. Okay. So what do we know? We've got now the diameter. If I've got a diameter, that runs through the centre, and we can see from here now that this is going to create the angle in a semicircle. So we can say that A will be 90 degrees. So this angle at the circumference, as we saw, was going to be 90 degrees. That comes from now the theorem that we looked at, which was somewhere, let's just grab that up, up here. So if we just move across, it's this one just here. So there we go, nice and straightforward. With these, it's often a case that many different theorem can be applied. So if this now is 90, this is 25, that gives me 115 degrees. This must be 65 degrees as the angles 
in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. So if you were asked, you could say now that angles in a semicircle are give us a 90 degree right angle. Angles in a triangle sum to give 180 so we can work these out from here. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, this one here, it doesn't go through the centre, but what we have is the bow theorem. So if we go back, we can look at the bow theorem. So the bow, wherever we were, is just here. So these top angles are the same, and then the bottom angles are the same. So if I move that here, we can see that. With these circle theorem questions, it's often a good idea to turn your paper. So if you can't see it one way, just turn it round. So this one right here is simply going to be 35 degrees. If this one was x, then this one right here is going to be x. And these two angles would now be on here the same. So we'd have the same angle just here. So let's go ahead and put y here. And we could put y just here. We're only asked for that one, so nice and straightforward. OK, this one, this is the arrow. Angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So if we have 73, E must be 146 degrees. A common error here is students half this value. Clearly, that is going to be bigger than half of 73 degrees. Angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So there's our centre point. We've got the two points on the circumference, and this angle right here will be half. OK, bow, that's the bow theorem, uh, sorry, the arrow theorem, but do state angles at the centre a double that at the circumference. Here we have a quadrilateral inscribed or drawn inside the circle. Four points touching. We have a centre, we don't need to pay any attention to that. We know that the opposite angles will be equal to 180 degrees. This, therefore, is 70. This one right here is going to be equal to to 100. So all I've done is said that the opposite angles equal and we saw that from the app. This was this one right here, wherever we are, let's grab that back and it's that one. So these two equal 180, these two equal 180. Just check when you add this up that this gives us 360 degrees. The angles in a quadrilateral sum to 360. So 190, then we're going to have 260, 360, and that is done. Okay, on this one, we're told A, B is a tangent, and we need to find A and B. So if this is a tangent and we have a radius, it's the radius tangent theorem, which we looked at down the bottom. So let's move that if we come down here. If we have a radius and a tangent, we create a 90 degree right angle. So that's what we have here. So that tells me that A is going to be 90. I've now got 90 and 25, which gives me 115. Therefore, B must be 65 as the angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. OK, let's look at this one. This one is where we use the alternate segment. If you like, you can turn this around. So in the exam, if you're unsure, just go ahead and turn it around. So we can see now using our alternate segment that this one is opening up to the right. So we could say now that that is going to open up now to the right just here. So we can say that this is going to be 40 degrees. The angle over here, this one right here, we're going to have now this angle, which I'm going to call X. This one is also going to be X. We know that this angle right here must sum to give 180 degrees on a straight line. It must also sum to give 180 degrees in now the triangle. So this we would call Y and they share that angle. So X plus Y plus 140 is equal to 180. We've got X plus Y plus the 40 is equal to 180. We were only asked to find the value of A, but as you can see, that's what we'd have. So if we just take this back now and just go back there and turn it round, then what we can write now is the following. We can say that this, and just writing this on, let's grab that up, A is going to be 40 degrees. If you ask why, we could say it's the alternate segment theorem. 
So 40 degrees and that's job done. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, this time we have now something slightly more complicated. Often we can use a different range of techniques. It's not one way of doing these and you might use different theorem to someone else. It really doesn't matter. The first thing I do when I look at a problem like this is say to myself, does this go through the center? Do we have a diameter? The answer is yes. So if I just take this triangle right here, then I know that the angles in a semicircle, if we have now a point touching the circumference, will give us a 90 degree right angle. So this is going to be 90 degrees. And then all we need to do, we've got the 32 just here, and we've got this angle just here. These are going to sum to 180 degrees. Now I know from that, if I do that, I simply need to add 58. So if you're unsure, just go ahead and work it out. Nice and straightforward. You might recognize now that this gives us the opposite angles in a quadrilateral. So if you liked instead what you could have said, well, this is a quadrilateral. We know therefore that the opposite angles, these are going to give us now 180. So this must be 90. And then we can work this out from here. So that's what we've got. Remember, these aren't always going to be to scale. So these two must be equal to 90, and we can see that this isn't a great drawing. So rely on angle facts rather than the way that this is drawn. Because if we look at this angle here, and I'll just take all of this stuff off. Let's just go ahead and take this now. If we look at the proportion of these angles, then quite clearly this 32 degree angle, that's bigger than 32 degrees compared to this one, which is 58 degrees. Remember, 90 degrees is just here. So don't don't try and get, just work on angle facts. Don't get a protractor on it. We know that this would be 90 degrees. This is going to be 90 degrees as we have now the diameter, the semicircle right here. And then we can work on basic angle facts. So this one now must be 32 and this one must be 58. And again, you know that those opposite angles are going to equal 180. So that's what we have, and uh, we can write those down. Okay, so what's going on here? We've got lots of information. I think it's hugely important to stress at this point a basic fact about the radius creating an isosceles triangle. So straight off, I'm going to pick up that from here, I've got a diameter. So here's my diameter, it goes through the centre, so we can say that A is going to be 90 degrees. Angles at the centre are uh, now, sorry, uh, angles at the circumference are 90 degrees if we have this. What I'm now going to do is go back to using basic angle facts. This is a radius and this is a radius. This too is a radius, so this length will be equal to this length. This length will be equal to this one, and that means that we're creating small isosceles triangles. So if I look at this triangle just here, what I've got is an isosceles triangle. So based on that, we can see now that the base angles must be the same. If I look at the one the other side, what I've got is a different isosceles triangle, which is going to be just here. So that is a different isosceles triangle. Here, I'm given information. So what I'm given is the following. I'm given that this is 60 degrees. Therefore, this one must be 60 degrees also. I've actually got an equilateral triangle just here, which would give me that this one is 60. How can I get this one? Well, I can do it a range of different ways. I could say to myself, well, this one right here, in total, is going to be 90 degrees. I know that because it's in a semicircle. So this one must be 30. We've got this one which must be 30, as this is a little isosceles triangle. So that one must be 120. And funnily enough, 120 and 60, straight line, these two angles will give us now the 180 degrees. Angles on a straight line sum to 180. This one right here, all we've got to do is simply now subtract 90 and 41 from 180, and that's going to leave us 49 degrees. 
So in theory, if we went ahead, if I added all of these now, so let's just add that and that. So if I added those and added those, I would end up now with 180 degrees, which you can see I'm going to. So this one 109, this one 71. If I look at this one with this one, I'm going to get now 90 down the bottom, 90 at the top, and that's what we have. Lots of different approaches. Okay, let's just uh, let's just get rid of that. Now, alternatively, if you wanted, there are so many different ways that you could do this. This right here, this angle here, and this one just here, this is going to be half of this one because it's the arrow. So if we look at the arrow from here, imagine now, and I'll just draw this up. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say I put now an arrow just, let's put the arrow just here. So that's my arrow. So I can see we've got this angle right here. This would be half. All I've done now is simply that instead. And we can see how that works. So loads of different approaches. You find what works for you, but do make sure your circle theorem holds for all and also your basic angle facts hold for all. Don't do anything crazy based on you thinking. Don't think work it out and you can see you can do it a few different ways. Okay, so what's going on with this one? Well, we've got here a radius and a tangent. So here's the radius, here's the tangent. So how can I deal with this? Well, let's go ahead now and work out some basics. This here is going to give me an angle and these two must be equal to 90 degrees. I can see it goes through the center here. So if I do that, I know that this one is going to be 90 degrees together. So this must be 55 degrees. So I've got 55 degrees. If I now look, I have the alternate segment. So this one is quite tough. So if we look here, we've got this angle right here. And it's going to be the same now as this one just here. So if I do that, I can write on that this angle will be 35 degrees. If the examiner wants to know why, we've got now the alternate segment. So that is going to be 35 degrees as well. If we now look at B, we need to find B, and I've got all of the information I need as I've got a triangle just here. So if I do that, I've got 90, I've got 35, which is gonna be 125, and that's going to leave me in total 55 for this one. So we can put that on and that's one of the many ways that I could answer that question. So that's going to be 55 degrees. Uh, another way that you could have done that is to simply say, well, if this one now is the center, then that's going to be 90 degrees. I know therefore that's going to be 90 degrees and we could do it that way. So on first inspection, you know, we could attack that many different ways um, I've done it like that, um, but as you can see, there, there may even be a quicker way. You just have to find what works for you and make sure they all stack up. So looking back at that one, would I do it the same again? I'm looking at this to think into myself, perhaps I don't need to use the alternate segment, perhaps I can just use some basic angle facts. So let's say now that this is going to be 90 degrees, so let's go for 90 here. So if that one is going to be 90, We've got this one just here, which is going to have to be 92 as we've got a straight line. So we can work out that this one is going to be 55. And from here, I can go ahead and work out the others. We're still going to, I think we're still going to need this one, knowing that the radius and the tangent create a 90. That one's 55. And then that allows us to get the top one. So lots of different approaches. And if you've got something slicker, feel free to use it. Different people will see it different ways and the speed at which you see it will maybe quicker than someone else. Don't worry. As I said, I'm doing these as I go, so there might be better ways. Okay, with this one, we can use a couple of different theorems. We could go ahead and use the arrow theorem. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use basic angle facts. Angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. Therefore, this must be 100 this is a radius as we got the center and this too is a radius 
isosceles triangle, base angles are equal, therefore now 100 from 180 divided by 2, 40 and 40. If I really wanted, I could have said now using the uh, arrow that angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So that's what we'd have. So angles at the centre are going to be double that at the circumference. So 40 and 80 works out perfectly fine. And as you can see, we could, gone, we could have gone any route with that one. OK, what's going on here? Well, we've got now, let's put these on, let's put B, uh, so what have we got? B, A, B, C, D, and E. Well, straight away from this, I can simply write now that this angle here will be 48. We know that the radius is going to create an isosceles triangle. If this is 48, this is going to give us a 90 degree right angle, as we have the diameter just here. So this is going to be 42. This is going to be 42. And then all we need to do is find now the others. So if we think that's going to give us in total 96, that one's 84. So this is going to be 100. Uh, what have we got? 196. So 180 on a straight line. So that is going to give us now in total 96. So let's just write that on as 96. Now, does that work? Well, we've got in total 84. 84 and 96 give us this triangle. And as you can see, there's an absolute whole host of different ways that you can do that. So you might have been shouting at me, oh, you can do it a lot quicker. Perfectly fine. Just go ahead and choose on how you want to approach that. Um, again, if you're absolutely nuts, you could use the, uh, the uh, arrow if you want. Angles at the centre. So angles at the centre, just here, are going to be double that at the circumference. So what we can say from here is that B will be twice D. I wouldn't see it that way, but it's an option for you. OK, let's have a look at this one. So what have we got going on here? We've got now a quadrilateral. So let's think about our quadrilateral. We could use this as a property. We certainly don't have to, but we know that the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are going to be equal to 180 degrees when we sum them. So let's look at that. So these four points, like so. We could use the arrow theorem as well, but angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got. So I know now the following. I know that this is a radius, and in fact, I'll just, I'll just take those off now, just to make this slightly easier to see. So one way we could do this is as follows. That is the same as that, which gives me an isosceles triangle. So 50 from 180 gives 130, so this must be 65, and this too must be 65 degrees. I know that the opposite angles uh, of a quadrilateral, which would be this one and this one, have to be equal now to uh, 180, so this would be 125 degrees. This one right here, now, if we just take this, angles on a straight line are going to be equal to 180 degrees if we sum them. So that is going to give me 130. And we could go ahead, find C from here, by simply taking 360 degrees. So 360 degrees minus 130 minus 125 minus 55 would give us C. Or you could do it a completely different way. You could say now that the opposite angles of the quadrilateral equal 180. This is entirely up to you. So if we look at it now, we've got 55 and 65, which means that this one right here is going to give me 60 degrees. Does that work? 190, 290, then we're going to have in total 305. If I add that, let's check that out. And then add those up. So 190, 290, and that's going to give us. Let's check on that working. And we can see that that's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is my calculations from here are wrong. So do be careful. Checking it, as you can see, is going to give us now that I've done my calculation wrong. I've managed to get 190 degrees. So this one should be 115 opposite angles. So do go back and check, as you can probably appreciate, after half an hour of doing this, I'm kind of losing my, uh, not losing my mind, just losing my skills. 
180 and their mat's going to work. So lots of different ways, but do go back and check. Don't just walk away from the question of thinking, check that it all works. And you can, as you can see, I started adding that up thinking I must have made a mistake. So that's one way that you could do that particular question. Okay, find the diameter of a circle below if O is the center of a circle. So here's O and we need to find this length right here. So this one is a circle firm question and we know that if we have a diameter, we're gonna have a 90 degree right angle. So what I need to do is find this length right here. Well, this is a case now of using circle theorem and Pythagoras. So if I call this one A, I call this one B and this one C, Pythagoras says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So using the property now of the right angle in the circle, we can see now that A squared is gonna be four squared plus B squared, which is three squared is C squared. So we've got 16 plus 9 is equal to c squared, 25 is equal to c squared, and c is going to be the positive square root of 25 as it's a length, so c would be 5 units. If you spotted that as a Pythagorean or Pythagorean triple, you're more than welcome to use that as well. So I've used one basic circle theorem and then used Pythagoras. Okay, what's going on here? Well, if we look at this now, we've got a 70 degree angle just here. So 70 degrees, angles at the center are double that at the circumference. Therefore, this one is going to be 35. We then have a bow. So if we look at the bow, what we can do is the following. So if I said that that's going to be a bow, then we know that C and D are going to be the same. Alternatively, I could have just employed the arrow once more. It's entirely up to me. I know that C and D are the same, or we could have just said now that angles at the center are going to be double that at the circumference. So D would now be half of 70. Entirely up to us on how we want to do that, but our answer is going to be 35 degrees. Okay, what's going on here? This one looks a bit more of a mess. So let's deal with this and see where we can go. So what I'm going to do now is look at some of these angle facts. So have a go at it. The way I'm going to take this now is to say that angles on a straight line are going to be equal to 180 degrees. So this angle right here is going to be 130 degrees. Therefore, now what we can say is that angles at the center are double that at the circumference. That is my arrow. So I've got my arrow and that would be 65 degrees. We have a semicircle here, so these two must equal up now to 90 degrees, so that is going to be 25 degrees. At this stage, we can use lots of different angle facts. It's entirely up to us on which ones we want to use. So I could employ a whole range now to find C and D. With D, I can use the bow, so let's look at a bow. So if I went for a bow, and I can put this on like so, let's just do that, let's see if we can make that straight. Uh, up here, up here, like so, like so, and then we would have the bow. So we can see that D and A are gonna be the same. That's one of the many ways of looking at that one. And from here, if this is going to be 65, we can simply now say that, that is going to be 90, and work out C. So C would be in total 25 degrees. So that's one way that we could show that. We could work out C as a bow elsewhere, but that would give us the 25 degrees. You could use similar triangles. You can use all manner of different approaches with that. That's just many, one of the many ways. So when you're in an exam, you take your pick. I'm sure if I sat down and looked at them in different ways, there might be a quicker way of doing it. There might be a completely alternative way of doing it, but we can use a range of different circle theorem and angle facts to get those angles. So that's that one done. Okay, let's look at this one. We need A and B. I've got the bow. So using the bow, let's go ahead. What we've got is the following. So if I draw a line up here, a line up here, one here and one here, we can see now that angles at the center are double that, so that's the arrow, 
So for arrow now, let's put this on. This is going to be half. So we've got 55 degrees. So that's going to be 55 degrees. What I'm now going to do is draw a quadrilateral. So if I think about a quadrilateral, a quadrilateral is going to be the four-sided shape. Here's my four-sided shape, and we're touching now each of these. So let's go ahead and put these on. We're touching each point on the circumference, there, 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 and there. Opposite angles of a quadrilateral need now to sum to 180 degrees, so this must be 125 degrees. An alternative way and less obvious way of doing it, this angle right here is going to be 110 from 360, which gives me 250, and angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. I personally wouldn't have gone that way, but as you can see, that still holds true. That would be the arrow, uh, essentially inside out, if you like, um, less obvious to see. So if we move this point round here, this point B, we would get exactly that. So we can see that that works. And again, it's one of the many ways that you could do it. There's no one right or wrong way. There's, of course, more efficient ways, but it's a case of checking that it all works out. OK, let's look at this one. 75, 100, A and B. We've got a few different approaches here. I'm just going to take this back to basics. We've got now a straight line, so the angles will sum to 180. So this is 105, and we can see now that this must be 75. On these types of questions, you can use the basics, you can use alternate segment, or a range of different approaches. So obviously angles of the quadrilateral. Here's my quadrilateral inscribed in the circle, and that's what we've got. OK, now if we think about this one just here, this must be 80 degrees because we have opposite angles of the quadrilateral. So that's going to be 80 degrees. And as we expected, we've got 100 degrees just here. Angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. So nice and straightforward once we just use some basic angle facts. A couple of different theorems you could have used. That would be my choice on that one. OK. So what have we got here? Well, let's just focus on the circle for now. We've got a circle and we've got a quadrilateral in it and we need to find these two angles. So here's my quadrilateral, touching four parts now of the circumference. Opposite angles of the quadrilateral must equal 180, 65. So that's 65 degrees. And this one right here is going to give me 95. So 95 just here. And I can say from this point here, all we would need to do is work out A, and this is one way we could do it. So that would give us now 85 degrees. So 85 degrees, and then we need to work out B, and it's entirely up to us on how we want to do it. We've got 85 and 65, which gives us now 150. So in the larger triangle, that must be 30 degrees. An alternative way would to say now that this is going to be 65 degrees, 65 and 85 give us the 150, and then in the smaller triangle, we just need the 30 degrees. Again, lots of different approaches with that, and you could even go ahead and think of some others. That's just one of the many possibilities. Right, okay, so what have we got going on here? We need to find the value of x. So I've got a straight line just here, Angles on a straight line sum to give 180, so this must be 100 degrees. Opposite angles of a quadrilateral equal 180 degrees when summed, so this one right here is going to be 80 degrees. Angles at the centre are double that at the circumference, so this must be 160 degrees. So lots of different approaches again with that one. All we've done is found x to be 160. Straight line, opposite angles, and then we're going to have the angle at the centre is double that at the circumference. OK, so what have we got going on here? We've got now the value of x to find. We've got y to find. We're not going through the centre. We've got a 62 degree angle, and we have a, b, c, and t. All I'm going to do now is write that these are the same. 
This comes back from the tangent theorem. So this is now the equal tangent. So what we're going to do now is look from here and work out some missing values. If I look at this angle right here, we can use the alternate segment theorem. So if this one is going to be x, then this one at 2 will be equal to x. If you want to spin your page around, you can do. So this is 62 degrees. I've created now an isosceles triangle. So this one at 2 will be 62 degrees. Base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. And remember, what we've just done by having these points right here is created this isosceles triangle. So let's just mark that on. So in total, we have 1, 2, 4. So this one right now must be 56. So 1, 2, 4, let's write that in. 1, 2, 4. So if we do 180 minus 1, 2, 4, what's that going to give me? 56 degrees. And y is 56 degrees. So that's one particular approach. All we've done is use the alternate segment. You could have used this one right here on the alternate segment. It's probably easier to see. So going ahead and doing that, we would have this one and the 62. And then we could go ahead from there and just work it out. OK, so that's, uh, that one's done nice and sorted. OK, let's move on. OK, so this one right here, we've got A and B to find. OK, let's think logically about this. We've got now a tangent, and I'm going to put the tangent on, and we've got a radius. So here's my tangent. Tangent touches the circle, and I've got my radius. This creates a 90-degree right angle. As we can see, we've got now the centre. So let's go ahead and put this on. This is 90 degrees. So if I put that just there, that is 90. Now, what I'm going to consider is this triangle just here. 90 and 25 is 115. So that must be 65 degrees. So 65 degrees here. What we've now got is the arrow. So if I now put up the arrow, angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. So just put in the arrow here. So this one must be 32.5 degrees. So A is going to be equal to 32.5 degrees, half of 65. Let's now go ahead and find B. With B, we can use the quadrilateral. So what I'm going to do, let's put this on. We have one point here, one point here, one point here, one point here. So that now gives us the opposite angles must equal uh, to 180 degrees. So I've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's going to give us now 100 and what's that going to be? 147.5. So 147.5 and that will give us B. So if I add these two together, that gives me 180. And that's the angle just there. So that's one approach that I could have used. Certainly not the only one, but it will give me exactly what I want. If I was asked to state why, I'd write it out step by step. OK, so this time we need to find the size of these angles and we've got a value of x. So we've got a little bit of algebra. Now this is the bow. We can say now that the bow will give us these two angles equal to each other. So 2x minus 10 must be equal to x plus 30. If I subtract x from both sides, so just solving this equation, subtracting x from both sides, that's going to give me x minus 10 is going to be equal to 30. Uh, 30. One step ahead of myself, adding now 10 to both sides. If we add 10 to both sides, we can see that x is going to be equal to 40 degrees. So I've solved x. I now need to put it back in to find these. So 2 times by 40 minus the 10, that's going to give me 70. Then x plus 30 is going to be 40 plus 30. So we've got 70 degrees. And we can see that that holds for both. Do check that it works. Don't just solve for x. Plug it back in and find these. And your reason would be now the bow theorem. OK, um, let's finish with this one just here. And uh, let's see what we've got. It says in the diagram, O is the centre of the circle, AD is a diameter, and AB is a tangent. 
angle uh, ATE is going to be equal to X. That's fine. That's that one just said. What we're asked to do is find in terms of X the size of angle ADE. So ADE is going to be this one just here. When we're talking about ADE, the middle letter is where the angle is. Okay, angle DAE. So DAE is going to give us this one just here. EAB. So EAB is going to be now this one just here. And then finally, angle AOE. So AOE is going to be this one just here. Okay, right, so straight off, what I'm going to do is look at this, and I'm, I'm just going to fill them out as we go. So I may not even answer the question sequentially, um, but hopefully it'll make sense. So first thing I'm going to show is that this is going to be a bow. Okay, so this is a bow right here, and we can see, therefore, that angle ADE is also going to be equal to X. We know that from it being a bow. So that, and I'll put that on like so, this too will be X. So just putting this on. So angle A, D, E, which is just there. And we can write this now and using angle notation, angle A, D, E will be equal to X. So that's what I want. And if you ask the state, it's for both. D, A, E. So this is this one just right here. So the angle that we want now is D, A, E. So I want that one just here. So we need to go ahead and express this in terms of x. There are a whole host of different ways that you could get this. The way I'm going to look at it now is that d to a is a diameter, a to e goes to the circumference, and then we're going to have this back here. And that gives us a 90 degree right angle just here. So angles in a triangle sum to 180. So I'm going to say it now, let's put this out of the way, that this one is going to be 90 minus x. So if this is now 90 minus x, we can put that just on here. So 90 minus x, as this one here is 90. So 90 plus 90 plus x minus x gives us 180. So that's that one done. Okay, EAB. So EAB is going to be this one. So we want this one just here. And this right here will be x. We've got now a tangent just here, and we've got a radius. This all creates 90 degrees, so this one will be x. Alternatively, what we could have said, it's an, uh, it's an alternate angle here, or the alternate segment theorem, I should say, with x. That one opens up, and I'll just show that. So that one goes something like so. So let's put that just there. That goes up in that direction. But that, and that one goes like so. I think it's easier to see the other one, and there might be a whole host of other ways that you can see it. So x and x are the same, or you could just say now, the tangent radius theorem. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so that one's done. Right, what we now need to do is angle AOE. So if I do that, I'll put that on, angle AOE. Let's put that AOE. That's the one that we want. So all I'm going to do at this stage is now draw my arrow. So that's my arrow. Angles at the center are double that of the circumference. So we're going to have this angle right here is going to be 2x. So we can say now, if I wanted, angle AOE will be equal to 2x. So nice and straightforward. All I'm doing is employing different circle film. So there we go. Lots of different circle film. We've had some basic tuition on them. We've applied them to a range of different problems, and then we've looked at alternative ways of doing it. As stated, if you find a better way, feel free to use that way. If you find a slipper way, it's entirely up to you. As long as all of the angles stack up in terms of every possible uh, outcome, that will be perfectly fine.